Shirley wants to be there. I can see she wants to be there. She's our pledge girl. Eat on. Everybody stay in class. Okay. We're going to do it right. I've had it with him. The connection of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands. One God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Play ball. <laughs> okay. So, Edgar, uh, can we take roll call? Yep. Uh, Thomas Lang here. George Cleveland I'm here. Suzanne Boudreau. Yeah. Jim Herman emailed me that he will be absent. Dr. Melinda McLean. Here. Mickey Norris. Here. Tom Owens. Here. Um, everyone is present besides Jim Herman. We have a quorum. We should also announce that the role we have Shirley. Oh, sorry. Alternative. Sorry. I apologize about that. Alternate. Alternate. Shirley Rosenthal Winston. Emily Whelan. So Emily Whelan and Jim Herman are absent. My apologies. Everyone both will come. Yes. Okay. So Edgar Treasurer's report. So we have three thousand dollars in our treasury. Um, there was a uh, couple of MAC members asked if we can get if the MAC can get business cards. Um, we ran that through John. We drafted some templates. Uh, John gave us the okay. We sent that to printing and uh, with the county public works department. Uh, for a quote and i wanted to get the quote before we gave them the, the okay to print those out so everyone's going to get 50 uh, business cards and it's going to have in the front your name and uh what kind of role you have with the mac whether you're a member a chair or co-chair and then your contact information and the contact information of our office um 50 each and the total cost for all of the cards in total will be 35 36 dollars a little bit the, Good uh, question, Edgar. Yeah. Is the way they also cast name off the name badges. badges? Name badges, I'll have to, yeah, yeah. So I'll have to, um, I haven't. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. To have it, okay. Okay, well, let me, let me get a, um, yeah, let me get a quote. On that, but I, if we folks want to vote on the thirty-six dollars, we can do that now. I think that we do it. Second, second, third. <laughs> uh, we can go around and take a vote. Okay. Okay. So unanimous consent. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've got someone who wants to come in. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't imagine encountering so many people that are going to see. I can do that. Yeah, you have, I'll have to. You have to. The only thing is, that it might get feedback. Yeah. Let's uh, continue. So we're good with the business cards. Um, Can I just say we're having an example of an issue that I'm sick of in this town? You mean loud noise and music playing? Okay. okay. I can shut the door. No, that's probably just on the damn road. Yeah, it is. Or going by. The motorcycle was a loud music. Sitting in my hot tub at night listening to me. Boom me. All right. Oh, sorry. 
catches up here. here. All right. Uh, so, continuing on, uh, approval of the minutes. Let, let's, let's continue. Uh, the January minutes, we got uh, the January minutes in our email uh, this afternoon. Are we in a position to approve them, or is there any discussion about the minutes? Anything that needs to be corrected? Eventually, uh, just by the rules, that we're not supposed to vote on anything that the public is going to be well. And I read it. So I personally would like to move it to the next one. Let's start bringing up the, the uh, rule and I think what we can do is move that to the next one. Good idea. Can I also suggest that if we can get the one month before we can try to remember it three months ago or four months ago. Or four months ago. Can you volunteer to take over minutes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm right at your... All right, so... so. <laughs> So moving right along, uh, we'll go into our presentations. All right. And Edgar is going to do the county update. All right. Uh, just a brief update. Um, so as you folks know, we have a park, a El Sobrani Park working group. So I wanted to give the community a quick update uh, just to let you folks know what's happening behind the scenes. So we've been in communication with, with Mechanics Bank to have a discussion on their parking lot. Uh, we've been working through their franchise and then the corporate office. So we finally got in contact with the folks who have um, power over that parking lot. And we scheduled a meeting with them um, later this month. Um, at the same time, we're working with the county to get some language on what would be a feasible tax measure. As last time when we had our last work uh, park working group meeting, we discussed a tax measure where it would only go into effect once we have acquired a property. And um, meaning that you wouldn't be taxed until we have that property. And it's a property that we believe is feasible and it's something that the community will be okay with paying the tax, right? And that most and that money is gonna be, the tax is gonna be to a loan um, that would be taken out to acquire the property and do everything that's needed to develop it. Um, so, mm -hmm. are you reading this for documents? Or you, you just the reason I'm asking this because this is quite sensitive. Who the heck is talking? Right. That's, that's somebody on the. Uh... All right. I will mute um, everyone for a second. Let's see. There you. All right. Um, so Sue, I am. I do have these notes. Okay. I can send them to you in an email. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and the next item that I was going to quickly update the group is that the county supervisor, John Joya, has a meeting scheduled on the 22nd of this month to meet with the director of the Department of the County's Animal Services. Um, I know that's a big issue, both in El Sobrane and in West County, which are feral animals and what's happening with animal services and their plan to, uh, you know, provide uh, homes for mostly dogs and, and cats. So um, the community has voiced concerns that they're not um, addressing the issue adequately. So we are scheduled a meeting with the department heads to see what they're doing. And I have a meeting with a couple of community members the week before for we can get all of their grievances and report that to the, uh, the department head. Um, we are working on a Thursday meet program. That means, what does that mean? So that means that every Thursday, at uh, MLK Park in Richmond, we will have, we're creating this, uh, this hub where people can work out, um, do organized uh, physical activity and also provide resources. So we'll be partnering with different organizations, including Kaiser, First, uh, First Five, Lifelong, uh, the, the county's um, health service department, and uh, many, uh, many others. And essentially we'll create this space where people can come work out and get resources. We're also inviting, uh, physicians who can uh, quickly speak with folks on the benefits of physical activity and do a little bit what we call walk with the dog. Um, and that's, we have a meeting with, that's going to be in partnership with the city of Richmond council member, uh, Doria Robertson, Robinson, sorry. And we're meeting with her on Monday to set a date, which hopefully will be early June or late May. Um, and that will be every Thursday at 630. 
um, at MLK Park in Richmond. Um, lastly, we're planning a uh, a homeless, a unhoused event for um, for the community of Richmond and West, uh, I'm sorry, San Pablo and West County. That's going to be in Jul on July 22nd, I believe. Um, and so we're still in the beginning stages, but we're partnering with Council Member Arturo Cruz from the City of San Pablo. Um, and we're gonna. This is gonna be a one-stop shop where the unhoused community can come, get a haircut, uh, take a shower, um, eat some food, and also get you know some of their some medical needs. And um, they'll we'll also try to provide some hygiene um, um, supplies that they can take. Can I ask a question? Yep. Like Project Homeless Connect used to be in San Francisco. I don't know Project Homeless Connect. So the answer is you don't know that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to learn more about that okay. over time. Yep. It, it just because um, with Project Homeless Connect, there were also opportunities like a lot of clergy came and did foot washing. Okay. And for homeless folks, foot washing is like a huge thing. Okay. They have terrible problems with their feet. Um, and so some of the nonprofit pieces in addition to can can when you do that kind of thing can can work. Okay. Yeah, I have a question, Edgar. Mm -hmm. uh, how about dental work? Does that include them? Medical care? No. no. So, in, de in terms of uh, medical care, we're going to have the county's health services and folks from uh, MediCal there to enroll folks and get them in the system. Um, so, yep. Is this a one time event and our children? So, we're planning, <laughs> yes, children can come. Um, uh, we're tr we're trying to do the vision. This is the first time we're having this event. The vision is to make it um, two times a year, um, and this is just one program, right? I'm sh I've, I've heard of others that are through SOS Richmond, and we're working with SOS Richmond and the county's core H three program. Um, so as of now, this is the first time we're we're going to do it. This is going to be the pilot, but we're looking at doing a uh, you know twice a year, once in the spring and another time in the fall. Um, well, so yeah. Project Homeless Connect in San Francisco. That was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it happened, and when um, Lee, when Ed Lee became mayor, he discontinued it, and it was, it led to some of the horror we're now seeing in San Francisco. Okay. And it really was effective. Okay. All right. I've taken note of that. Thank you, Melinda, and I will keep you updated. Um, and that is all I have. Does anyone have any questions? We have a group of uh, dedicated women in the health front, and we're very, very interested in this. There are some cross members of course. Would you be willing to share that piece of it with them? I'm assuming you have the number of emails and so on. Have yes. Um, I don't, you have their email? I don't have their email. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay, I'll put that. We do have a hand up in the virtual audience. Uh, okay. Jean Let's Henderson, see. go ahead. Hi, the other place people can go to take showers and wash their clothes on a regular basis is GRIP, right? GRIP is a Richmond program. And they won't let people that no, don't, I don't live I in don't, Richmond, no. I bet they will. <laughs> right, my my connect, saying that's a rich, yeah, I guess my, my the reason why I say that's a Richmond program is because I don't know. I'll have to check with the city of Richmond and get more specifics, but- um, Actually, I, if I were you, I would just call GRIP. Because I bet you yeah. they'll let people come in and wash their clothes and stuff. They probably won't let them stay overnight, but right. they have a good facility for showers and washing and stuff like that. And certainly always lunches. Okay. And please, if you're not um, speaking or you're not being asked to speak, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. All right. Just look like we're going to your hand up. Um, Edgar, I just wanted to follow up on something that one of our uh, residents brought up at the last meeting, which was the uh, noise complaints, yeah. et cetera. Right. And I was wondering if maybe you could just briefly follow up on that. Yeah. Um, so as folks know, we don't have a noise ordinance here in El Sobrane. And um, just quickly, right, this is just some information I want to put out there. We'll probably have a longer discussion next month where it will be one of our discussion items and we'll just dedicate a whole time to that. Um, but just the main points, we don't have a noise ordinance here. Um, and if there's to be one implemented, it will be a countywide because it'll be 
to the unincorporated area like any other ordinance. Um, so it'll be a, an a ordinance that will apply to the whole county. Um, but I did contact our county's code enforcing enforcement officer and I asked them if there was anything that folks can do in terms of like noise complaints or what is what is the the, the way that people can kind of voice your concerns or submit a complaint, right? Um, and I'm, I'll read the, 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 I'll read the response she gave me. She said, for our conversation, I discussed the county, I discussed with county planning staff to ensure the most accurate information has been facilitated. According to Contra Costa County planning staff, the county does not have a general noise ordinance, but under Contra Costa general plan, the new construction permit noise is part of the noise element restrictions, which that's, that's something I just want to highlight. There's so. Yeah, well, it's a you're well, we're right. You're working with a bureaucracy, so you're gonna that's what you're gonna get. So, so, the noise element restrictions, which requires noise compliance and can be enforced under those stipulations, right? So, what does that mean? That means that if there if there's not a noise ordinance, but you can't submit a complaint if there's excess excessive noise, right? But it's not something that, from my understanding, um, and and this has been brought up before, and I believe uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez has has touched on this a couple of times on um if if there's a loud noise that's extending i think like over midnight or something um i i, I remember I, I can be lieutenant rodriguez correct me if i'm wrong but um can the police can law enforcement enforce anything whether uh because there's no noise ordinance is that something that you folks usually respond to or can enforce yeah we'll we'll, we'll still respond to the uh, noise complaint uh, but you're correct. There's no ordinance or countywide ordinance that we would be enforcing. There is a, a general um, disturbing the peace penal code. However, the majority of the time that that's by way of uh, a citizen's arrest. Um, that's not by way of something that we can enforce because um, it has to be an on view crime based on the fact that it's a, a misdemeanor. Uh, there are other ways for us to try and try and mitigate it. For instance, if it's parties, typically. Uh, there's other issues that are taking place, such as parking, which uh, in my past experience, once you start towing people's tow uh, vehicles, that tends to uh, <laughs> that, ten that tends to end the party. <laughs> um, unfortunately, with that, uh, some of the vehicles that end up getting towed uh, potentially could end up being a uh, a neighbor's vehicle, which you know could create further issues. We try and avoid that, but um, I can't say that it, it doesn't happen. But yeah, you're you're absolutely correct with the uh, with the noise ordinance. So yeah, th th thank you, Lieutenant Rodriguez. And there's something I want, I see your hand, George. Um, there's something I do want, there's something I do want to say that like, this is a way that can be enforced, right? We don't have a noise ordinance, but we do have a nuisance declaration. So if something's a nuisance, um, there's a way that's on the code, where, which I can share with everyone that says, if there's, if these items are being done, and it's, if it, if it falls into one of these, which is like, these, I'll, I'll say an example, attractive, a nuisance dangerous to children, such as an abandoned, broken, or neglected equipment, machinery, um, or unsafe pools, right? These are some nuisance or, um, let's see, construction or debris that's including cutting or cutting at unreasonable times. Um, so like if it falls under one of these items, that's a nuisance. And there is a nuisance declaration in the county that if this is being done, um, they can get fined, right? So. Um, that's one way that folks are, are, are going around that not having a noise ordinance is that we do have a nuisance declaration in the, count, in the county's uh, uh, ordinance code, which is under the California ordinance code. So, it's very strange to me where I live. Mm -hmm. If my neighbor across the street has lots of noise, mm -hmm. I can't do much. But if my neighbor next door, which is in Richmond, <laughs> makes a lot of noise, which happens frequently, right. I can do something about it. I, I'd also like to know how it's handled in what I will call the more upscale unincorporated parts of Contra Costa County in terms of noise. Because it's a city or it's a No, I don't know. That's what I said specifically. Right? So, so and, and, I'm gonna, and I'm going to add to what George just said. When we got our land use permit, it came with noise restrictions, lots of them. And we were lectured up one side and down the other 
about we couldn't have our farmer's market in the back of the property because it would be too noisy. So uh, it's unfair. We need a noise ordinance. So I think we've got mm -hmm. a good discussion regarding noise. Um, maybe if... So what's uh, the next step? I think I because I don't want a noise ordinance. I don't want to be held to a different sure. standard than everyone else. I think it's something we can discuss in the next meeting. Edgar had mentioned that we could probably bring somebody in from the county to talk to that. Not hopefully that same person who sent the email. And and the other thing about it is around John, around here. He needs to write it. Yeah, around here because of how. We are in the sphere of influence of Richmond. Basically, we're kind of surrounded by Richmond, mm -hmm. and also it's, like it's right the end goal. And people all. drive through and, and, and make it, a huge it, melting place. Not that, it's just it's just the circumstances of the topography and the annexation and how we're enmeshed with the two cities around us. Right, it's different. You know, it's like it's, it, other areas are more. Defined, if you will. I don't care. Okay. I don't know. I'm saying, I'm saying, why it should be. Yeah, so let's see if we can work out to move to the next item. Okay, well, I don't care. Good. Is there any way we could get that on the ballot? Yeah. Okay. Or the county get on it? Or pass it? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a discussion about that. Let's make sure that we will. This is multiple yeah. times. Yeah. So I think if, if we had one of the county people present on that, yeah, and we had, you know, we we're able to devote a full yep. session to discuss. And I'll, I'll ask John to be I here as well. I think we need we need to just start an emergency. We, we need to start with John. Well, we need we need to figure out what county staff is going to say. It's not a lot. Yeah. They're going to come in and give us that same explanation. Well, let's let's find out before we do move on. I think we have one person who wants to comment. The hands up for Jean. Okay, Jean. Okay, go ahead, Jean. I would just comment that, of course, and as I'm sure a number of you know, we've had um, a 24-hour generator that both makes a lot of noise and actually I haven't been out there in the last couple of days, so I don't know that it's still on. But for probably three or four months, we've had a generator. Um, going for 24 hours a day, billowing smoke into the air and making lots of noise. So people like PG&E and AT&T, they don't have any rules to abide by, apparently. You know, Jean, my yep. understanding about that is that AT&T is forced to do that because PG&E can't get around to giving them power again. I, I don't know what it's from, but it's been- That's a PG&E problem, and that's why they have to maintain that and they just switched it out and now it's stinkier nastier and louder well i've been working with the bay area air quality management people because yeah. it's outrageous they've already been out to see it a couple times so we're starting to get somewhere but it's just billowing all this smoke so let's make, sure, let's make sure we have a comprehensive discussion of this and absolutely it would be good if, okay. if, if i would like to i think it's a good idea perhaps if john yeah. Presented on this. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, today was not, yeah, this was not meant for a discussion. This was meant in, uh, as an update to be tabled. I hear you, but it was not meant to be a discussion. So, um, and folks in the chat were saying, if the people in the library can speak one at a time, um, out of the respect of those who are trying to listen in the meeting online. So that's something just to know. Yeah, because they can't understand. So, Edgar... Are we okay with moving to item P2, which is your update on Concert Foster County Fire? Yeah, so um, last meeting, uh, Con Fire said that they won't be able to be at each meeting, but when they're not here, they'll provide a, a, a monthly update. Um, I followed up with their public information officer, see if there were any updates that they can share um, today. They said that they didn't have anything, but if they had any questions or any concerns, to pass them to me. Um, and I will send that to them. So this is kind of the that shift in, um, in structure that they're having, where instead of attending every month, they're going to be attending quarterly. And then uh, within those gaps, they'll try to get a, a monthly update to us, which today they didn't. Um, but whenever that happens, they ask us to send them any questions or concerns that they might have for they can get back to us, which is not convenient. But um, can I ask a very quick question? Yes. So what's the deadline for weed abatement this year? And will it be extended because we've had so much bloody rain? People are really struggling to get their weeds down. 
they're as high as an elephant's eye at half the place. Okay. I do not know that, but I would ask. I'm going to ask them. Okay. Yeah, I would I would point out that maybe the frequency of updates and the threat of uh, fire protection people should increase in the fall if we have the back from fire danger. I I agree. Okay. It's it's, it's a huge interest on the part. That was that the report. That's it. That was the report. Okay. So if there are no objections, we can move on to uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez's update from the sheriff's office. Uh, hey, thank you guys. Um, I'll start off with the uh, monthly stats. So for the month of April calls for service, we had 619. Uh, as, as a result of those calls for service, we generated 55 reports. Our select crime trends, uh, we had 15 in February, 7 in March, and 9 in April. Um, those 9 in April, uh, three of them were domestic violence. One was an auto burglary, one was a stolen vehicle, uh, petty theft, two vandalisms, and uh, one robbery. Um, one of the other things that's been trending upwards, and it's it's an ongoing issue, it's an issue that uh, both Edgar and myself have met with the property owners, but uh, continues to be an issue. However, we are getting help from uh, the public and folks are starting to call in. If you guys have been out in the uh, Castro Ranch Road area, Alhambra Valley uh, Road, you guys notice that there's uh, out, illegal dumping signs with a number to call and report it. Um, with that being said, we're that, I apologize about that. Uh, week we had two. Some of it uh, were we able to actually get identifying information, and uh, they're coming from um, jurisdictions, some of which are in El Sobrani. In those cases, it, it tends to be household waste that's being dumped along the side of the road. Uh, the one most recently that uh, we saw, or that I actually got emailed to me today, photos of was uh, looked like it was yard waste. So some of it is landscapers going out and dumping that. One of the recommendations that I'm going to have, uh, in, in addition to following up and making contact with these folks, is um, when we have the illegal dumping meeting countywide, Jeez. is to recommend oh, you're breaking cameras that. installed we out there on you. those roads. That just is, a, is another way for us to identify. Oh, are you there? Yeah, your so, uh, is breaking up. I apologize for connection. Um, <laughs> in addition to that, um, am I, you guys hear me? Kind of, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll try a little bit harder. So in addition to that, uh, some of the staffing, we increased, uh, we added some staff to day shift uh, just this week. Uh, we currently have three trainees assigned at a base station. Uh, one of them should be finishing up training uh, tomorrow, actually. The other two were uh, in the starting phase of their training. And in July, we should see 11 coming out to patrol countywide. Uh, that'll be starting their training. Uh, in regards to your guys' comments about weed abatement, I uh, attended the uh, West County uh, Fire Safety Council meeting last week. Uh, that was discussed. Uh, I believe that... Uh, Crew 12 is uh, working to uh, start deploying around the county. Uh, one of the one of their projects will be uh, weed abatement. Uh, some of the other things that were discussed in the meeting were uh, the placement of signs um, in areas regarding evacuations uh, and just uh, general knowledge. And outside of that, I got nothing else. If uh, you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much for your report, Lieutenant Rodriguez, and everything you and the sheriff's department do to keep us safe. Uh, any questions? Um, go ahead. So um, I can hear you reading the crime statistics, but I really can't catch those. Um, and I know that my neighbors are really interested in that. And I was wondering whether you, it would be possible to send us the transcript. I believe we asked last time, and I'd love to have that so it's public knowledge. Yeah, so what I'll send you guys is uh, I'll send them to Edgar and he can distribute them to you guys. It'll actually be the stats themselves. 
I'm not going to send you guys a, a report, but I'll send you guys the uh, actual stats and you'll be able to see. It'll show the block. It won't give you an actual address, but it'll show the block that the crimes are occurring. Uh, so, for instance, the robbery was uh, 500 or the uh, 500 block of Apian. Um, yeah, just, it, just so you guys have an idea and reference. And then it'll tell you the types of calls for service and go from there. Um, any further questions, either from the council or from our audience online or present? Go ahead, Mickey. Yeah, could you repeat what you said about the dumb thing if you're breaking out then? <laughs> Yeah, it just continues to be an issue countywide, um, but we're seeing a lot of it in that area. I believe uh, just talking to the property owner out there, just to give you guys rough numbers, there are probably over 100 reported that were reported not just to the sheriff's office, but to various agencies that play a role in it, uh, environmental health services, public works, and the sheriff's office uh, altogether. So um been working with with them uh i speak with them pretty regularly i have i've asked them that when they do get it to to personally uh let us know if if they're not doing it through dispatch or if they're reporting it to an outside agency just so we're aware of it and that it is taking place and um yeah so we're still working on it but uh it's a it's a county-wide issue thank you okay questions i don't see any Anything? Nothing online. Nothing online. Anything in the council? Okay, uh, thank you, Lieutenant Rodriguez. Really appreciate your report and everything you do for us. And I think we can move on to the next item. So are we gonna have any report from the- I'm not seeing, nope, I have not okay. seen anyone. So we have a presentation from East Bay Mud. Here we go, great. Well, in person. So we got in person and on online. Director Young is online. Um, so is Mr. Volker, who I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot, sir, because I've been with the district for 28 years and I don't know you. Are you new? <laughs> I am, yeah. I've been with the district for about nine months. So oh, uh, we've got a ways to catch up to you. Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who, who amongst you is going to present or who's going to start and who's going to finish? Director Young, start. Start. Yes, please. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Marguerite Young. I'm the East Bay Mud um, Board Director for Ward 3. Um, hi, George. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, it's been a few months since I was uh, before you, I believe. Um, time is still a little on the smushy side, um, for me anyway. Um, but uh, so my ward includes um, El Sobrante, um, the parts of Pinole and Richmond that are around y'all, um, as well as Arinda and Moraga in Contra Costa County and then in Alameda County. Um, and includes the city of Piedmont and a big chunk of Oakland, um, which is where I happen to live. Um, this year, we are celebrating our 100th year anniversary, our centennial year. And we're about to have a big old birthday party. Um, and we wanna invite you to join us um, and, and um, uh, everyone that wants to come out. We are hosting a community fair kind of in the center of the district um, at Lake Temescal uh, this coming, or not this coming Sunday, a week from Sunday on May 21st uh, from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, it's a family friendly event. We'll have performances from local groups from around our district, uh, kids activities. We'll have some of our construction trucks and equipment there for kids to climb on and honk the horn um, and other activities. Uh, we will also have um, food trucks on hand um, for folks to um, purchase um, lunch. Um, and we will have uh, wines that are made in the watershed um, and also a be unveiling a special East Bay Mud Centennial beer called Water Wings um, from Drake's Brewery. Um, all of the proceeds from the beer and wine sales will go towards our Water Lifeline program, which helps uh, low-income families uh, pay their water bills. Uh, the reason, though, that we are here tonight um, is to uh, talk about how we're investing in the future for the next 100 years so we can continue to support the community and protect the environment. 
um, as one of those big investments is right up the road. Um, uh, we're doing a big upgrade to the treatment plant um, uh, there in Alsa Bronte. Uh, and um, that and many other projects uh, are part of our upcoming investment program. I wanna turn it over to our budget manager who's pacing back there behind the yeah. table, uh, Sam Feldman, um, who will go over our budget and rates and um, we'll make time for, for questions after and I'll stay on to um, help with any of those that I can, although I'll probably be asking Sam to fill in the blanks on a lot of it. Uh, Sam, take it away. Thank you so much. We've got a PowerPoint. Do you want us to? I think, yeah, I, if yeah. I can share the screen, is that um, so? Joe, you have access. You, you're going to share the. You have the PowerPoint. Yeah, I do want to say that it's very hard to hear people in the room um, when you're speaking. Um, so um, if you do have questions, if you can try to speak up so that um, uh, Joe and I can hear them as well as Sam. Thank you. We know we have mics. Uh, is this where um, I'll stand here so I'm closer to the what I think is the microphone and hopefully this works for you all. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, as Director Young said, we're here to talk about the budgeting rates for East Bay Mud. Um, we've got our 100 years we're really celebrating. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, so we're celebrating this 100 years of service. So I guess I'd introduce myself. Sam Feldman, manager of budget. I, I manage a team that has helped put together a biennial budget here and works with uh, all of our colleagues throughout the district. As, as George can tell you, it's a collaborative process. Um, we uh, work together, all of us, to build this and present something to the board. So we have um, the proposed budget books. Um, we're out talking to the community about this. Um, so uh, and, and we start, we're, we're celebrating our 100 years in just a few weeks here, supporting public health, the economy and environmental protection, delivering uh, drinking water and steward of natural resources all the way up to the Sierra foothills there at Pardee. We'll go to the next slide. And we talked about this 100 years because 100 years ago in 1923, by a vote of the residents here at the time, they created East End Mud to uh, consolidate the private utility districts or private utilities that were previously providing water. And it was an opportune time. My understanding is this was Party Dam finished in 1929 and it uh, then delivered to our local reservoirs uh, very soon after that. I believe just in time for what because water was about to run out of the area. Um, and so uh, the reason the voters put this into place was to get reliable, affordable water. And so we think we've been doing that for the last hundred years, and we want to do it for at least another hundred and another hundred after that. Um, and so we, we uh, you may know this all already, but it's really quite spectacular that the rain falls and the colony watershed, for the most part, that's where our water comes from. And then we bring it here through pipes, through our three aqueducts, we treat it and deliver it out to customers. And uh, we also do wastewater treatment, though uh, I don't believe it covers yeah. all of this area. It does not. We don't get even close. So um, uh, we serve 1.4 million water customers and about 8 million the wastewater. There's a couple more wastewater slides at some point, so I'll skip through pretty quick. We get um, water from the um, upper dam, the um, Brioni's dam, or do we that reservoir, or do we get it from San Pablo as well? You know, this is where Director Young is great at answering the question. He said I would answer that. I'm not sure where we're probably mostly getting it from the El Sobrante treatment plant, um, which comes um, from. Um, I could, is this about the uh, treatment upgrade? No, no it's it, where does our water come from? Well, Riones or San Pablo Reservoir? Well, uh, initially it comes, most of it comes from the McCullumy. Um, and the um, it it is it comes through um, uh, uh, San Pablo, right? Sorry, sometimes right. of the year, sometimes of the year, you're served by Arinda, right? I believe, but um, right, it's 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 variable. It's it's a, it's a, it's a local. It's variable. It depends on climate actually yeah. as well. So it's it's primarily San Pablo. So thank you, thank you, Rex. Yeah. Um, Okay, next slide here. 
so we, uh, we've uh, been working for 100 years and we have challenges ahead. So aging infrastructure. There are pipes in the ground that are older than East Bay Mud that have come from those private water utilities that still are in the ground and are still uh, serving folks today. So we need to continue on our quest to uh, replace those pipelines and um, uh, bring that up to modern standards or, or uh, make sure they're um, seismic being resilient. You know, about an hour ago, there was about a 5.0 or 6.0 earthquake in Tokyo. And so this is a thing, you know, every time it happens somewhere else, I think it goes out my emergency kit going. And at East Bay we think of the same thing. What are our seismic risks? And so it continues to be something we're really focused on in our pipeline work and everything else, making sure we have a resilient system. Also the climate change, droughts, floods, fire. I mean, just nine months ago, we thought, boy, we would love to buy some water. We were out there trying to find all the water we could find from other districts and buy it, make sure we had enough for our reserve <clears throat> reservoirs. And now we have too much water. What are you gonna do? So it's these, it's the swing between droughts and, and water um, surplus and floods that really is a concern in climate change uh, in the future. So we wanna get ahead of that with some of our big infrastructure work. Also emerging contaminants. Have you, heard, have you all heard news on PFAS? Yeah. Um, so that is something we do not see in our McCulley watershed water. It does minimally show up in the water that comes locally, that you know, the rain that falls in the reservoirs here, but it is less of a problem here probably than most other places in the country, luckily. However, we will also have to comply with these future regulations. And uh, you know, some of those regulations may be getting out ahead of where we think treatment is. Like I, it may be challenging to meet some of those under our existing. Um, I mean, look, the, the U.S. existing infrastructure for water treatment, um, but it's an important thing we need to uh, consider as well. Nutrients uh, is an issue on the wastewater side, so I'll freeze over it, but it's fascinating. Uh, changing regulations as well. You know, we could not build Party Dam today the way at the speed and cost we built it then, because probably for good reasons. We have more environmental protection. We have more public input necessary. We have better labor laws. Um, and so, uh, but it does raise costs and it makes us uh, pay, uh, it, it causes us to think about more about how we get things done in addition to just getting those things done. And then we just like you all in your pocketbooks, we have inflationary cost pressures. So equipment, energy, chemicals, labor. I always like to talk about, there's a, there's a type of chlorine we use that five years ago or so, was 50 cents a gallon, we now pay 250 a gallon. For that same uh, uh, chemical, and it's it's a it's a symptom of the global supply chain, and yes, me, it's a symbol of a symptom of our uh, few few companies out there, and they can charge what they want, uh, which is another challenge. But we face it as well. Do we need to be concerned at all about lead in water? And the I'm gonna I'll, I'll shout the questions out. Do we yeah. need to be concerned about lead in our water? Overall, no. There are elements of houses or after the after the district stops being responsible that could be a concern in some places so we offer lead testing kits and there's a whole i, I bet if, um joe may know the web address can you project a little bit oh yeah, yeah. Gone? project yeah. a little bit sorry um joe may know the web address but i believe if you went I, i'm guessing you went to eastbaylaw.com select lead that may get you to some more information about it or search on our website for lead um, because it, it can be an issue, not so much in our pipes, but in, in your pipes, right? So um, if I can, Sam, if I could uh, just interject, we um, replaced all of our lead service lines, our 97% of our lead service lines in the 90s. Um, so quite a long time ago, we have gone back and um, double checked that in the more, in more recent years um, and have... Um, uh, basically removed all of our lead service lines. There are some um, customers, um, if your house was built um, around the Second World War, that is when lead was used as um, a pipe material due to shortages of other better pipeline materials. Um, so what, what we did in our last go round was check to see that people didn't have lead going from their meter uh, you know, forward into their house um, and have dealt with that. 
Um, we are getting ready to address um, galvanized pipe, um, which may also have some um, issues with um, scale, it's called scaling. Um, but most of the lead that people, if people find it in their water is from fixtures in their homes. Um, that's the problem that mainly exists in schools as well. Um, we are quite fortunate here um, from the water side of lead. Um, lead paint is another issue, not in our, not in our ballywick, um, and lead that remains in soil from uh, near freeways from um, vehicles. Um, so, um, but we do have free lead testing for anybody that wants it. And if I can, in my role as an East Bay Mud employee who attended a recent board of directors meeting and the issue of the service lines, the lead service lines, in other words, on the customer side of the meter was brought up and they have some statistics and most of them were in Oakland or Richmond. And I'm going off memory here and either for Elsa Brownie, it was either zero or something less than 24. I mean, it's a very, very small amount here in Anchorage. Yeah, so, any home built after about 1950 uh, is not going to have lead. Um, is really during the war years. And Sam, I have the link that I can send in the chat and send it over to Edgar as well for the link or the lead testing for on East Bay Mud. Thank you. And let's go to the next slide. So we have these challenges ahead. And so one of the things our budget is going to do is make generational investments in our uh, infrastructure. So a Rinda water treatment plant, I think we should be um, proposing uh, creating an award for East Bay Mud just for the beautiful design of that. It's a beautiful treatment plant um, and award it for ourselves. But we're in this period of, uh, uh, why not? I used to work for SFPUC. I think they would challenge you a few places. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. <laughs> um, so we're doing a five-year capital improvement program. It's increasing our total capital investment by 500 million or about 24%. During the pandemic, we actually uh, raised rates less than we had planned in order to uh, sort of moderate the impact and we tapped reserves during that period. So the proposed rate increases would accelerate investments in resilience and reliable water wastewater systems of the future. Next slide. Uh, so what is driving rates? I've talked a lot about this. So capital investments really increasing the number and scope, getting more work done um, and uh, accelerating those investments. Chemicals, as I mentioned, overall is about a 90% price increase. Uh, and you can see the rest there. Um, software is a really interesting one, I think, because you know we're in this area where a lot of software gets developed. One of the challenges we face is a big enterprise with a about a billion, a little bit over budget for a year and, and spending in a year. We have to often buy really cyber secure, you know, high quality enterprise grade software. There's often only one person out there that sells it to you. And so when they, when you, when you have their software, they can raise the price. So it's a challenge that we, we face. Is it name Larry Ellison? Uh, no comment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he has a boat. I'll say that much. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, historical, yeah. Okay, next slide here. But it's also Jira, a couple others. All right. And then we're really proud of this. We, we um, a lot of us take our commitment to being financial stewards uh, as a real value. Um, it's part of our internal values and our culture. And we're, as a reminder, uh, we're not for profit public utility. So the rate dollars go directly to operations capital improvements. There's no shareholders, there's no profit that spins off to anybody else. It goes straight to uh, our operations and capital. And then last year, I'm really proud of this because I was part of this team that, that got there. We're the only California water utility to get Moody's uh, AAA bond rating for our water mines. We also have a AAA from uh, S&P, the other uh, large rating agency out there. So we're the only one in California with that distinction. SFPC is a little bit lower, no, no insult to them. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just the need of no. uh, But we're really proud of that. And it's a good indicator of our financial stewardship and our, our commitment. I think it keeps me from saying anything. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, next slide. So we take it seriously. We're in the budget process now. We're in this May, uh, June timeframe, May 9th, just uh, yesterday, was the report and recommendations. You all could have received. Received your Prop 218 notices if either you're a ratepayer yourself or if you own property or a combination of them. Um, 
Um, so we're in that Prop 218 process to publicly notify uh, about our rates, and we have our public hearing set for June 13th. Uh, and so that is the opportunity, and I would read closely your Prop 218 notice if you want to protest. Officially, uh, we have to follow the state guidelines on that, so we, we recommend reading that. So we recommend reading what? Say that Prop 218 notice. You will have gotten one in the mail shortly. Yeah. Yeah, they should, but by law, you should have received it. I got it. We got ours. Good. Very colorful, little, you know, folded in half thing, several pages, lots of rates on it. But it'll be online as well. It'll yes, it'll You're be on the website online. right now. Yeah. Oh, the notice itself. Yes, eastbaymud.com slash rates. You can see a ton of information about this. They put that in the chat. Um, next slide here, if you don't mind. Um, so what do we spend our money on? It's always a good question. The, uh, so we show this uh, graphic of uh, about a dollar. And uh, so every time you send us a dollar, where does it go? 52 cents. So over half goes to infrastructure improvements. So we're directly um, paying Oops. for that uh, work to improve our pumping plants, pipelines, reservoirs. And um, we then spend another 31 cents directly on water service. So this is where chemicals are paid from, storage and treatment and delivery costs. So now we're up to 83 cents already is going to create to these two important functions. And then administration is like to speak up for it. So that's me, I'm finance. It's, it's George, it's ISD, it's our technical teams, it's HR, it's all the things that support the people out in the field doing the day-to-day -day work. And then customer service, when you call, we answer. I think we're actually one of the better utilities out there for that. It's a pretty quick um, pickup time and it's something our board pays a lot of attention to. It's one of our key performance indicators every year related to the, the quality of our call center. We also do education, water conservation work, billing and collection. Natural resource management or watershed. If you ever have a chance, our fisheries program is really fascinating in partnership with the state. Uh, my understanding is one of the best in terms of returning the amount of salmon that get the return um, from heading out to the ocean and come back uh, to us. Is that Sacramento? That would be Sacramento. Yeah. Which fisheries are yours? Near Comanche Reservoir. I don't know that it has a name, but just Comanche. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just, uh, it might have a specific name. It's a fish hatchery. Fish hatchery, easy for me to say. Yeah. Um, and that's something I'm going to lapse into my East Bay mud. <laughs> personality here instead of this, but it's something that's, that the company is very proud of because it's it's the environment and it's sustainability and it's something that 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 we look forward to and and the board of directors is quite interested in the fact that that board meeting that I attended there was a report about it and the things are trending up. And is that something that's advertised to schools and you get kids going? I think we used to do tours. I don't. I don't I yeah. 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 They just. You used to do tours, right, Director Young? But you haven't done it since COVID. Yeah, you can go up. Um, so I, I'm. I, it's really hard to hear um, the questions, especially when more than one person is talking. I'm assuming you're talking about the um, the fish hatchery at uh, Comanche. Yes. So um, first of all, we managed Comanche to um, basically for fish <laughs> um, and for um, releases downstream for um, agriculture um, contracts. Um, we are um, like everyone that uses, every utility that uses water um, in the state and has put up dams, um, we are uh, part of uh, the effort to restore uh, and bring back uh, salmon and those fisheries. Uh, the Twal or the McCullumy is a is quite a small part of the uh, California. I think we're um, nine. I don't remember what the small percentage is. A small percent of the fishery, but almost forty percent of the commercial salmon uh, catch, um, and near that in the recreational catch of salmon. So, I mean, we can be proud of that. And at the same time, it's actually a statement about um, what a struggle it is uh, in many, on many of the other rivers to manage um, salmon. And we're quite proud of our ability, of uh, what we've done to restore the, uh, the fishery. So um, I'll leave it at that. But yes, there are tours um, and the best time to go and 
see salmon in the river when they're coming back up is in the fall, around October we're, and November. We're, we're proud of that, and you should be too. You help us pay for that, so thank you. Um, you're, you're helping uh, salmon out there in the world. So what you'll notice here is that I didn't say water sales or water purchases, and um, the reason I bring that up is uh, we have a we have a phrase we've been using recently to to talk about this question. Um, this rain is free, getting it to you is not. The water in an average year, in a non drought year, most of the water, all, I mean, almost to the penny, every all the water is our own water. Either a little bit of groundwater or entirely from a colony or local watersheds. So we don't buy water, but all of the costs you pay and you pay your bills helps us take it from the, the dams up there and deliver it to your door um, clean and reliably. So um, I think that's just important to know. Uh, next slide, please. And then, um, uh, surprised you with that one, sorry. So the, here's some of the big investments as Director Young noted uh, towards the bottom there, Sobrante Water Treatment Plant where it's getting an improved chemical safety system as well as sort of highlight there's some other smaller improvements there. There's also uh, 127 miles of pipeline plan to be replaced over the next five years. That's an acceleration of our current pace as we continue to work on the backlog of pipe that we think needs to be replaced. And then other major changes to our water treatment plant, including that new UV disinfection, uh, which will help uh, to some extent future-proof that treatment plan. So we've got the right treatment in the right place for uh, the, the effects of climate change and ensuring uh, high quality water. And then all some other work, neighborhood reservoir pumping plants, and then a lot more. There's a whole 150-page uh, book that describes some of our uh, capital plans over the next five years. Next slide, please. Uh, I think this is a race waste water. If you're interested, I think it should be in your board packet. Um, and so, uh, but, but you're not our provider. We're not your provider, so you don't. Know. Next slide. <laughs> you are. You are. Yes. We know, Harry. There you go. I'm sure you do a great job. Yeah. There you go. He's he's <laughs> he's director for West County Wastewater District. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wiener, Wiener. Is that Wiener? Wiener. Wiener. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's our wastewater provider around here. Yes. Yes. We go on. I just wanted to be clear. It sounds I, I think that East Bay mud water is actually held to a higher standard than bottled water. Is that correct? Hmm. No, that's yeah, I'll I'll take that one. Um, it's yeah. it's the, it's really that bottled water isn't held to any standard. Oh, yeah. Um, it it's just it um yeah, it's more the that it's not it's not managed by the Safe Drinking Water Act. Bottled water is a food product, so it's an FDA, um, uh, regulatory um process. I mean, it, I'm, I shouldn't say it doesn't have to meet any, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't meet, it doesn't, it doesn't fall under the same compliance standard that um, our, our water does, that we have to meet. And we meet all of the standards all the time, pretty much. So um, our water is, is very, very high quality. It's not to say that some bottled water isn't higher quality, but the standards just aren't the same. Oh, thank you. So the treatment plant um, and some brandy that you're going to expand, is that going to be the one on um, on the end? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they're putting that plant in that open field. Uh, the plant's already existing. The plant's yeah. yeah, yeah. being upgraded. Oh, yes. Oh, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's an, up, it's an upgrade of yeah. the existing plant. It's been on the island. Like any mechanical thing, it needs to wear and tear. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it will be eventually so remodeled. Yeah. Yeah. Stronger. Yes. We can send over, um, uh, we just uh, did a recent presentation for um, residents in the area of the plant. Um, and we have um, some slides that we can send over. I think we've done um, at least one presentation for the MAC of um of the project and we can certainly do um that again um as well it's it's a project that's going to be ongoing over the next i don't know five to six years um we're in still in the early uh phases um of it but yeah that the there's a lot of 
effort and time going into the landscaping uh, to create a less visual um, impact of the project. Um, but it will actually increase the capacity of the treatment plant and its ability to, uh, you know, as Sam was talking about, we expect that um, the quality of our source water is going to become more variable over time. And so we want to be able to meet all of those um, changing conditions and um, uh, be able to um, address increasing population. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, maybe two more. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't bring my bottle of water, but I'm stealing this from our general manager, Clifford Chan. But he will bring a bottle of smart water that costs you 250, three bucks at the grocery store. It's 20 ounces or so. And uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, the East Bay mud water is just over a penny a gallon. So uh, that's a steal. It's a deal. <laughs> smart water, not very smart, is my corny addition to that. Uh, Visual, but it's an important thing to say. The water is still um, quite a good value. At the same time, we know that there are customers who have trouble paying their bills. It's, it's a it's a problem of income inequality in our in our area and across the country, and it's one that does not appear to be going away. In fact, it may be getting worse. And so, we want to make sure we can, within the limits of the state law and the constitution, um, provide for them. So, um, we talked about the the beer and, and some of the sales of the Centennial event will benefit Water Lifeline. We have a, a suite of really customer assistance programs for customers that have trouble paying the bills. And we really, really want to promote that and get people involved. And we can't use rate revenue. And, and so we use these other sources of income um, to help customers pay their bills. Um, yep. Um, I had a neighbor who had a very serious leak and she ended up with a bill of thousands of dollars and she was on a fixed limited income. So I was wondering if you could speak to what you do to help with that, because that was oh, yeah. I'll do it. Thank you. Um, lapsing into my role as an East Bay Mud person who works in customer service for 28 years. Um, we have, it's a district policy or percentage you take your pick. Um, if you get a bill and the usage is really outrageous and it's the result of a leak and you get the leak fixed, and depending upon the size of an adjustment on the bill you get, you might need to provide proof that the leak has been repaired. There is a one time, one adjustment per year allotment for something like that where they take half the difference between the current year as opposed to the, the previous year at the same time and split the difference and give you the adjustment. So in other words, if you got your bill, now we bill in, in, the, in units of water. So if you get the bill and it's like, you get a bill for 300 units of water and your bill last year at the same time was eight units. So 300 minus eight is 292, cut that in half. It's 146 for a $15,000 repair. Well, <laughs> it all depends. Sorry, it, it, it all depends. Okay. That's lovely, but it's peanuts. No, it's not peanuts. It is some person who's about to spend $30,000 to upgrade my water service. So I'm feeling well, like I'm okay. That's that's so I'm that's an upgrade of the water service, but you know, there are issues, and I understand that not the, not the scope, but we're gonna have a customer too. And about 10 years ago, the house line, the run that runs from the water meter to my house, broke. So I caught it in time. So the, the water usage wasn't horrible, but it was not good. And I did have to spend $1,200 to have the, the line repaired. So I get it. Okay. So to, summarize, so to summarize, maybe it would be a good idea if somebody has a circumstance so, you know, no, I, I've already talked about it, but I just want yeah. to be so, public. So, you. how do they call us? How do they call, call, yeah. call. And, Yes, so, no, no, don't call me. But it's something that that you would just call our customer service phone number. You would get connected to our contact center, and they would be able to point you in the right direction for the type of adjustment on the bill. Is there some for business or one time thing? What do you mean? Are you have to I think I, I think we had a reasonable point, and it seemed like they just said, "Okay, we're 
Would it forgive that? And, uh, mm, no, it, no? It, it's, it's, a, it's a specific thing. And it has been in existence since I started working at the company. So it's been like that forever. At least it wasn't new when I started. Thank you. Um, the, there is something new, though, that can help folks identify um, leaks more quickly. Um, and um, that is uh, to get a flume water device, uh, measuring device. It, mm -hmm hooks on, it's very simple. It hooks onto your meter and there's an app on your phone and and it will give you real time, uh, real time water use. Um, and we rebate, I think almost all of the price of it um, uh, for customers. Um, and it's, it's quite good. I have one on at my house um, and, you know, it also helps you see, you know, you can have like who takes the shortest shower contest and stuff like that. Um, so mm -hmm. I would, you know, recommend um, that, and that's available on our web. You can find out more about that on our website as well. Um, and get a home leak kit. Mm -hmm. Dan, Dan, oh, so here's more uh, eastbaymud.com slash assistance for information about all of our customer assistance programs. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and so we're really proud of this. We're a community partner. You know, uh, we, we feel that very distinctly when we're out here in the community. I love doing this, frankly, probably too much. And, um, you know, this, I like pointing out the slide, uh, the picture on the right are some East Bay Mud staff on an annual event we do around to clean up the bay. That's all volunteer time, not staff time to do that because we care, we really care um, about our community. And I think that's what really makes us special as a community partner and your local water utility. Um, next slide, please. So um, that's it. Any questions <laughs> come to our events? Thanks. Okay. Uh, question I have is, you know, I know that we have some fair, you know, water is pretty, water service is pretty expensive. We you know have, have had some pretty stiff bills, even though our water use isn't particularly high. So the question is we're gonna probably be hit with some increases, both increases over the summer. So I'd like to have an idea of what your goals are that are driving these increases. Are you like specifically trying to keep up with inflation? Are you trying to keep a certain amount of cash flow? Reduce what what's what's the philosophy behind? These rating, those rate increases. In, in sort of summary, um, there's two two big drivers. One, inflated, um, both for labor costs as well as supply costs. Chemicals and energy are the two biggest operating costs. We spend tens of millions in a normal year, and we're about doubling or tripling that. Um, well, about doubling it right now, and that's it's the same pay, uh, bills you're paying. PG and E went up for you; it goes up for us um, uh, and our other electric providers. So. It is inflating. That's a big part of it. Um, and then the other element is increased uh, capital spend. And so uh, both because of inflation as well, so supplies and materials are harder to get and more expensive, but also it's getting more work done. Um, more pipeline, uh, more water treatment plant. Two, two of those projects up there, Rinda and uh, Earth San Leandro, are a quarter of a million dollars each over the next five, uh, five or seven years or so. Although some of them are starting now, so um, that those are big projects again to get ahead of uh, where we think we need to be. So it, it's those those are the two big capital investments and uh, meeting inflation. Our yeah, this is um, what I what I would um, just to underscore. Um, you know what Sam said, um, and part of us thinking about it as this sort of centennial year um, issue is that. Um, water infrastructure actually lasts a pretty long time. Um, and so we do finance these major investments. Um, and that AAA bond rating is quite helpful in our ability to do that because it means we pay, uh, end up paying very low interest on those capital improvements. But we are making um, a once in a generation um, level investment in our water infrastructure right now, all these treatment plants uh, upgrades, as well as the pipeline improvements. 
So that's a, a big part of what is driving, um, you know, the rate increases. And we're trying to, um, you know, if we paid for all of that on cash, nobody would be able to afford water. Um, so the, the reason that we finance it through bonds is to create some of that, you know, generational equity so that, um, you know, the, our kiddos will be paying for those improvements um, when they're, uh, that, that we're putting in the, putting in the ground and, and putting into the water system now, um, as well as future customers. Uh, Sue? Um, I was wondering, is, is there going to be, is this the presentation tonight or is each of your colleagues also? No, this is Saturday. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question about land use. Um, East Bay Mud Watershed is a vast amount of land that is more or less closed to the public. Now you can get a pass, which is a nuisance and you have to be organized to do it, but it basically cuts off people from using that land at least some of the time. And it also cuts off dog walkers, it cuts off cyclists. And yes. I was wondering whether in terms of, you know, customers feeling good about East Bay Mud, because <laughs> I noticed that there's cows, which are really bad at, you know, like taking a poop in a toilet, they just like do it where they stand. And I'm struggling to understand why you wouldn't allow more public access. Sure. Why we wouldn't allow what? More public access to East Bay Mud. So, yeah, so we have we have almost ninety. We have about ninety miles of trail um, in our in our watershed. Um, uh, and you're right, we do have a permit system, and that's to educate people about the need to protect water quality. We also have a number of endangered species in our watershed, and because of that lower level of access we're able to provide critical habitat um, for a number of, of threatened and endangered species. Um, within that, we do want to increase access and we're doing things to increase access. Um, as you might know, during the pandemic, we um, uh, pulled back on the need for permits um, and had a, quite a spike in, um, in, in user days, um, about 300,000 user days. Um, and that's where we are at now. Um, we are adding um, QR codes to the signs entering all of our trails so that people can get an on the spot permit. We are allowing uh, free one day passes um, that are free one day permits. Um, and the, as you may know, um, sounds like you may have a permit. The cost of a permit is, um, quite low, um, uh, but we're also starting up having a low income permit, a uh, free low income permit um, that will be um, rolling out shortly for anybody that um, feels that, that that price is a burden. The reason for the permit is just to have people understand that um, the watershed is different than the parklands um, that they may be um, uh, used to visiting. So if they're so different, I would want, I wonder why you allow cattle grazing because that's a really significant environmental impact. Why we allow what? Cattle grazing. Cattle, it's uh, cattle grazing is actually a very uh, important part of our um, uh, fuels management um, program. And that, that's because historically the land was grazed. Um, we do use utilize goats. Um, and we'd be happy to come and have you guys get a, uh, a PhD uh, level um, treatise on our on our fuels management program and watershed management in general from Scott Hill, who directs our watershed uh, program locally. Um, and also would invite you all to join us on a water walk uh, at San Pablo Reservoir, which is coming up, I believe, on. June 14th, is that right, Joe? Uh, yes, June yeah. 14th. Yeah, June 14th. And again, you can sign up for that on our website and maybe Joe, you can post the link for that. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's a uh, guided walk um, to talk about uh, the dam, the watershed, the history of East Bay Mud. Um, and um, yeah, we'd love to see some of you attend that. We're also going to be doing those water walks around our district um, from here on out. 
once I'm a month. Sorry, it's June 3rd, Director Young. June 3rd, sorry. Melinda, oh, no, 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 no. Joe, that's the bio blitz. The oh. I'm sorry. The water June, walk is the yeah, 14th. You're right. It's it's uh, June 24th, it looks like. Oh, June. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I'll we'll post it in the chat. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Yeah. So my question is though about dam releases, and it could be and it could be that this water walk is when I could ask this in a more specific way, or maybe it's not. But for those of us who live below the San Pablo Dam, and of course we had a very wet year, so we had a lot of dam releases. Yeah. And um, what was interesting about that, um, unlike in 2016, where a lot of our neighbors had a whole lot of damage, um, we did have some damage, at least along our portion of the creek. But I'm curious if any of you can explain why we're getting mostly silt. We basically have a beach now on our property. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the silt is unbelievable. It's And it's like quicksand. Uh -huh. And I don't, um, a friend of mine who works for Fish and Game said that uh, perhaps you all were trying to manage the silt on the bottom of the reservoir. Um, but I'm curious about that because we get the we get the notices of how many cubic feet per second, blah blah blah, and that's helpful. But the silt is a whole other thing. Uh huh. I don't know. I, I do not know the answer. To, I I pride myself on on being able to answer most questions at least in a superficial but accurate way. I don't have an answer for you on that one, but we will get one well, for you. Is, who, who should we talk to? Or maybe this water walk is the time to find that out. I don't know. Yeah, but I'll, I'll try to get an. Uh, I will, Joe. We yeah. will bring. We will raise that with our water. The water walk is going to be with our, you know, our ranger staff. So I don't know. And well, I think our general manager will be there as well, and he'll he'll probably know the answer because he knows the answer to everything. Um, is and, that uh, we'll try to find it out before that though for you. Um, in the next, get you something in the next week or so. That's right. It was super dramatic. Um, at Mickey's yeah. I mean, I, I could imagine, I mean, yeah. I, um, I don't know the answer. I'm not even going to try to answer it. I don't know. But I, I, um, I gave you a card. I, I yeah. it was, email me and I'll, I'll figure it out. Oh, I also okay. have the director Young's email. I mean, <laughs> She 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 wrote, Joe wrote it down, I'm sure, and he, yes. we will be getting an answer from our water supply folks. It's not horrifying, but it is a thing. It's just yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Silt is generally a, a good thing for soil health. Um, so there's well, that. It is kind of damming up the creek, and it is uh -huh. a little bit like quicksand. Yeah. So, I mean, we've survived it this year, but, uh, uh, you know, we have another, they say it's El Nino next year. We may have lots of rain again next year. Hallelujah. And <laughs> why are we getting so much silt and maybe more water, less silt? I don't know. So that looks like something that you'll be able yeah, to. It's a thing. You guys get a class. We can get an, I think, I think we can get an answer for that. I just Great. don't know. Director Young. Okay. Um, Are there you, further questions? A quick one. Could you please send me who I should get in touch with around the issue of land use? Because I'd like to follow up on that. Um, and are, do you mean locally, watershed locally? The, the kind of policies and the research behind it? Um, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, we can do that as well. Thank yeah, you. that's no problem. Can you send the email of the person responsible maybe to Edgar and then Edgar can furnish it to us? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So are there further questions either from the uh, council? Ma'am, I, I didn't catch your name, but if you could frame what your specific questions are, that would also be helpful. I mean, we have a whole watershed management plan that we'd be happy to just give you the link for, but um, as well. A good start, but uh, I would like to take a sure. chance. Thank you. Yeah. I put um I put my email in the chat so Edgar has it and I and he also has my email address so uh, Edgar if you could just provide uh, them my email address and then you if you could type the questions about the silt and the land use uh, to me and then I can forward those off and get you guys more specific answers from our team okay and, and please CC me yep all right are there further questions for um, the, the team from either I team? have actually one more question. Huh? 
So I really appreciate all the infrastructure upgrades and all of that. Um, but the word on the street, and um, and it's I, I haven't I can't say yet because I haven't had this yet. Um, we're about to have to upgrade from one and a, one and a quarter to four inch meter because we're now being required by the county to put in fire sprinklers in our property. And, and um, I have heard estimates that it will take two years to get that upgrade. Um, that's worse than PG&E. Um, so can you say something about backlog of being able to do these kinds of upgrade projects related to uh, people having to upgrade their service for reasons like that. And not to mention, it'll cost us $30,000. And I, I don't begrudge the cost. I get the cost. But if it's really going to take two years, we will never open the good table. Can I, um, I mean, there's, it varies from, pro from project to project. Um, we, we are uh, including in the upcoming budget, um, some increased capacity for what's called applicant work, which right. is where, where this project, that project would fall. Um, if you are um, changing the alignment of the pipe, in other words, if it's gonna go in some, some other part of the parcel, that's gonna, that will require more design. But if you're just simply, I, I mean, I, again, um, this is something for our new business office. French area. I mean, that's our plan is to just upgrade the service in the it, same. It, I don't think it, the, the time really happened, the, the lengthy time happens more so in the case of new projects where, you know, they're putting in a new line, a new service line and you know, they have, you have to submit a design for where it's going to be and there's all the other utilities and, and, um, uh, but we are aware, I mean, there has been, there has been backlogs, um, we're working to speed it along. Um, and um, what I would encourage is that you contact the new business office, or um, I think it's the new business office that you no. will contact. Um, <laughs> Then, uh, sooner rather than later, sooner rather than later to review your project. This is just the word on the street is that, I mean, we almost didn't, well, it's a very long story, but if I'm just asking about the backlog of what you're talking about with applicant work, and um, it sounds like you've put some more in the budget towards that, and I'm glad to hear that because, um, you know, projects like our project, which are going to provide community resilience. You know, if we're sitting, if pg es actually hooked us up and we're waiting for you, we don't want that. Right. <laughs> we don't want that either. Right. <laughs> that gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so, but contact the new business office sooner rather than later. We, we're in the queue. Okay. They've given us zero estimate on how long, and I, I get that. You know, we have to wait until they've looked at the plans and they're sure but we're trying to keep it as simple as possible since we've been forced to do this uh, by the um, building department. Yeah. Well, what I, um, uh, you know, if you start feeling like things are taking longer than they should, please don't uh, hesitate. Yeah. To, you, know, <laughs> you have my email. So I think we got a great discussion. <laughs> it's been an excellent presentation by. The whole Edmund team really appreciate it. Um, if we don't have any further questions, Harry, uh, I have uh, a, an interest in your debt. To uh, how big is your debt versus your entire budget? We recently, for the first time in the history, 125 years of history, uh, <laughs> taken out a large uh, bond. Yeah. So I was just curious how well yeah. that looks in your budget. You you asked the right guy, Matt. Before I had been in the budget, I was the debt administrator. So we have uh it's it's about 2.8 billion dollars in debt um compared to a budget of plus or minus a billion. Um so it's about two and a half times two to two and a half to three times the amount of debt to handle uh revenue writing expense and look at it um which is above average nationally and below average for the state 
Um, I also, before I came to East Bay, worked for Moody's, the rating agency. And so um, it, it's uh, it's in a good place. If you're ever, if you just want to talk debt, I love talking debt, so I'll my card. Call me for some free, uh, free friendly advice. Um, yeah. yeah, I can talk about debt forever, so don't get me started. It's yeah. just... <laughs> need the opposite of debt. No debt. Yeah. Well, this is what I love. No debt. That, that's kind of why. Uh, yeah, we've done a well, lot of. Can, deep... can I just say I don't love no debt because no. we can't do pay go. We're right. here putting things in the ground that last for seventy five to one hundred years. What is the sense of paying for that right up front? Yeah, and doing that all on your shoulders I and not your grandkids and great grandkids. I wasn't talking about my district. I was talking about myself first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I exaggerate by saying no debt. The good, good amounts of debt is all. All right. You took your question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if it's an interest, we have a, another substantial item to discuss. Yeah. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Next item, discussion items. These are development plan applications. And we have uh, county file number CDBR23. And the uh, applicant, well, I won't even read it, but uh, at any rate, is the applicant here? Yes, yes he is. is. Okay. <laughs> Mr. De Silva, could you please explain your project? Just take us through it. You gotta unmute yourself, sir. There you yes. Go. You guys hear me? Yes. Hi, everyone. Yes, I just bought this house a few years ago, and uh, the last homeowner he built uh, a couple buildings on the property without a permit. And then this year we tried to build an EDU and uh, build a new house at the property. And then uh, when they submit the permits to the county, um, we come up with a uh, variance on this project because those buildings is like an oversight. And uh, that's why we're here to see what's the solution to see we can get a variance for this project or to see what's the steps we can move on. So all of these buildings are well contained within the footprint of your lot, correct? Yes, it's been built like uh, 20 years ago, I believe. There's the records the homeowner gives to me, the, the previous homeowner. And are you planning to change how you're using the property? No, we're not going to plan to change anything. Uh, should be Everything should be all the same. The only thing we're going to uh, change is just add uh, EDU and, uh, and the remodel the existing oh. house. ADU. Yes. Yeah, which is a good thing, in my humble opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. De Silva for wanting to add an ADU. Say again? Yes. We're already talking about Go ahead. Sure about that? Yeah. Okay, but thanks. All right. Okay, yeah. Do you have any further? Well, he isn't he asking for us to. Yeah, well, I mean, but I'm just, I'm just wondering if, there, if Mr. De Silva has any further description of the property that he'd like to make before we start construction. Okay, uh, you're talking about the, uh, the description, if you're going to change anything or? Yeah, so that, that was my main concern, or is there going to be, let's say, more traffic? Uh, no, it's not, it's not going to be a traffic, it's still a, a private. Uh, property, I have a, you know, it's a, it's a uh, private gate on it. It's not a traffic. Nothing is going to be more add on it because it's going to be a family living in the EDU. It's going to be my, uh, my grandpa. It's yeah. not going to be a, a nothing traffic, you know. Structures this, I know you guys kind of scared the huge property because it's three acres, but on now we just leave me, my wife and my son at the property. So can I ask can I ask a question? You said that when you went to pull your ADU permit, they noticed these other buildings that were out of um, out of compliance, right? Yeah. Yes. So are those are you taking those down or are they still standing? Or no, we I don't plan to take anything down. I'm uh, I'm trying to plan with the county 
it's to bring everything to code because okay. the, yes because the previous oh. owner is it's, it's it's he builds it he builds it with no permits and uh, i'm a general contractor i want to bring everything to code good thanks that was my question great so, as, as far as I can see, you're making improvements to the property, which really works out best for the whole community. Yeah. I personally yes. have. Uh, I, I have a question on the setbacks. Are the setbacks that you're asking for uh, variances on? Are they on buildings that were already built? Yeah, so it's, uh, everything is already built. If you have on the, oh, if you have, if you guys have the drawings uh, with you guys. Sure. If you see everything is already on it, the only thing is not on it. It's a uh, ADU and the uh, the new property, but everything else is everything there. Everything uh, the down below, it's uh, it's everything. It's, uh, it's on there. How big is the ADU? The ADU would be twelve hundred square feet. That's a good one. That's big for an That's huge for an That's Yes, I, I, I want more. I want more, but the city did just let me do it 1,200. <laughs> so your neighbors don't have any objections to these setbacks? No, because uh, when I move here for the first time, um, it's kind of, you know, some neighbors, they're, they, they kind of on me because they don't know where the property line is. Uh, that's oh. why I that's why I took the 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 boundary survey. I took the topo survey. I got everything in hand, and they represent to all the neighbors to see where we at. Where's my line? Where's your line? And then I show them, and now it's everything's cool with them. Have no problem. I had just three buildings: the two car garage, which was E, and yes. Then the restroom, which is also the RED-A-6-1, and the carport, which is right on your property line. Correct. And the carport, I can almost understand that if the fire marshals are going to let it go, and I notice that you're all big lots and everyone else is drawn on the front of theirs, so there's a lot of room. Yes. But to get the for the fire breaks or for the firemen to come in, they have to have a certain width. So that you're actually by being on the property line, you're using up some of your neighbor's property. That they yeah, so, uh, the only the carport, if you see this three feet off the fence, um, is the only closest uh, building we have close to the fence. But uh, my neighbor um, to the fence to his house is about. 150 feet. They have oh, a huge backyard. Oh, I've noticed that. Still, so, they're not objecting to it. I, I guess I don't have any objections. So. I don't have any objections. Yeah, I'd like to make a question that we either write a report. Well, so what, what, what I'll do is I will send to the engineer in charge the result of our uh, discovery. So I think we can just take a by unanimous consent, yeah, no objection to your project. So the map doesn't object, and we're supportive. More housing, yeah. Um, good luck on your project. Hey. So what I will do is I will. It's yeah. my job to send an email. Yeah. 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 Just voice my concerns about the three pieces of property. So, okay, we have, we finished with that item and uh, information. Let, let's go to the next topic. Let's go to the next topic, please. Um, uh, information items, reports by MAC members. Mm. Okay, I think we had a really successful uh, birthday. Birthday. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, could I ask a question? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Have we had any success with maybe altering the Brown Act so that some of us could participate via Zoom? 
No. Uh, that's no, because the Brown Act, we're following the states. Uh, well, the state is not doing anything about it, even though lots of people around the state would like to see it change. Yeah, I mean, if if it's being changed, yeah. I'll, it's not something that the county's doing. It's something that they're no, waiting no, on. I understand it's the state. Right. I'm just wondering if we've heard anything. I haven't heard anything from the state. Yeah. So, Mickey, your day. Yeah, your day, April 22nd. We had a wonderful turnout by the community. We had, uh, I think, probably close to 150 people participating because we had 131 uh, waivers filled out. And we know that there were people who didn't fill them out. But I didn't. <laughs> but who, who participated nonetheless. And then, so, uh, it was almost double actually from last year, I think what we had. So uh, the great thing is we had a lot of uh, family participation this time and Boy Scouts and we had, it was a really wonderful collaboration between the El Sobranti 94803 Green Team, Spawners and SOS Richmond. And we had a, a 30 cubic yard um, dumpster, and we almost filled it, but we would have filled it. However, SOS Richmond took three loads directly to the dump. So good for them. And I think, believe that they cleaned up two uh, homeless encampment sites on that day as well. So it was, a, it was a successful cleanup, although we could, we still need more. We need our we need our third Saturday cleanup because we we sent a lot of people downtown and we Chris and I walked it um, two days ago and it was just the dump again. It was messy again. <laughs> was, I, I don't know what happened, but so we're gonna have our next third Saturday cleanup on May twentieth, and you're all invited to come and help us uh, maintain what we're what we're doing here. <clears throat> we had go ahead. We had um, wonderful info tables. We had a nice after party. We had great food uh, that was donated by uh, Mount. Well, some we bought some. We had some donated from Neighbors Donut, Starbucks, um, Chicago Pizza with the Twist, and uh, Mike's P Mike Mountain Mike's Pizza, and uh, Contra Costa. County Normal also uh, donated some sandwiches and things like that. So it was really wonderful. Um, Chris and, and Louise and, and Mark Zucker provided some musical entertainment. We had a lot of great info tables from the community. So we had a good representation of uh, the different organizations that are active in our areas. And Sunbury is still healing from that day. Yeah. And the library, we, the library was incredible. They were such an incredible support to us. They, um, they not only made their own book displays and had an art installation, but they were so supportive with the uh, promotion as well. And so Thank you to John Joy's office too, and all the organizations that put out information uh, to let the community know that it was happening. And then Sue uh, had a, a children's activity set up in here for art. And we also had uh, people, children and adults, making bird feeders, uh, thanks to Maggie Kinsel. And we, we had this great idea with pine cones and bird seed and peanut butter. And it was a lot of fun. So the whole day, you know, it, it, it went relatively smoothly. So we're learning more about how to how to do this. We're looking forward to our next uh, major cleanup, which will be in September uh, for the National Coastal Cleanup Day. Now, I looked online and it looked like International Coastal Cleanup Day is the day before the storm on the 16th of September. But it looked like the California Coastal Cleanup Day is the following week. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I guess we'll have to determine if we're gonna do. Minimal interference with yeah. stroll. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, the week after the stroll might be a great day to have a well, cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. Stroll in the damn best. Yeah. 
last year. Mm -hmm. And so we were rang out that that and we did get more people. So I was a little disappointed in that. So it won't our third Saturday is the day before the show. But we'll see. I guess what our committee will determine. Is there any way you can schedule the big flight dumpster to be placed in certain areas throughout the community? And then yeah, yeah, that's something for the for Joya's office, uh, Joya's office uh, when they have community dumpsters. Mm -hmm. We have one coming up. In it's going to be in July. In July. Mm -hmm. in July. Yeah. Okay. The place, uh, the place I have to check. So that's, yeah, that's, that's not part of it. That's not what we're sponsoring, but I, I believe the county is in, in charge of that. But I think we we are uh, uh, looking forward to having another um, subcommittee meeting. We should probably schedule something like that. Do you want to do it this month? Okay. So. So we'll schedule another. Uh, and we'll have, probably in a couple of weeks, maybe we'll have an update on, on any progress that people have had with the murals and, and any other uh, litter cleanups and something concerns that we have. We can, we'll be meeting here at the library, and I guess I'm doing as well. So we'll, we'll figure out a, a time and uh, do that. And then, Jen, is anything else? Anybody out there? I know because I see a lot of my green, the green team is uh, online. We have good representation. We have a lot of people in the room. You have a question? Chris. Uh, Ryan. Did you have a uh, I wasn't sure if this was the public comment period or if this was just a period to respond to um, Mac member comments. So I, I apologize. Okay. Coming up. All right. Either Chris or no. Anne Marie or Ramon or Monica, they are part of the green team. It doesn't look like we have any okay. questions. So, so um, um, thank you, yeah. everybody, for your participation. It went great. Part of all these things. Did you want to say something, Chris? No. No, I was just saying that you did. Uh, I thought your presentation was good. You covered it. Okay, well, Chris manages a keep out the front of beautiful.info where we are constantly put, posting new new events and information as we get it. So thank you, Chris, for that. And uh, that's it. Wonderful. And thank, thank you, you, Tom and Vivi. You're you're also a sponsor of some equipment. We greatly appreciated that. You I filled up a whole trash bag walking up and down out here. Yeah, wonderful. But you also supported us in getting some equipment that we needed. Okay. And also we greatly appreciate that. Thing. All right. Well, thank you, Mickey, for everything you and Chris and your team do. Okay. So just next uh, agenda items for upcoming meetings. I think there's a lot of interest in the noise ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. So we really definitely want to have a substantial discussion of that next time. Okay. And then you and I had talked, uh, Edgar, about I could do a brief presentation regarding the Martinez refinery incident and yep. what's being done to follow up on that because okay. I'm involved in the oversight committee. Good. Yeah. So, okay. You got appointed. Yay for you. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell he's very excited? No, actually, it's it's really interesting. Okay, PhD in chemistry is useful. There you go. I never really did any chemistry with my PhD, but I think you can make a report. Will and will John be discussing animal control issues that have been circulating? We can. So we have. Maybe we can add to that. Noise and control and not one of the same. Heavy metals. You didn't hear the, the coyotes last night. Yeah. Were, well, I bet so. Really? <laughs> so I think you've got three agenda items for the the mm -hmm. next meeting. Yeah, that's plenty. If that's plenty. So now this takes us to public comment. And Ryan and we so two minutes each. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, I believe you had a public comment having me um good evening mac members my name is ryan lau external affairs representative at ac transit um just wanted to encourage you to uh take an important sorry my toddler is um not happy right now 
<laughs> um, encourage you to uh, take uh, an important survey that AC Transit um, is conducting right now, as well as uh, encourage your fellow uh, Elsa Bruntons, is that the correct term, <laughs> uh, to take to take the survey as well. Um, so we're um, currently conducting a top to bottom uh, analysis of our entire system to update our service um, in the wake of the pandemic. Um, as you're probably all aware, uh, the pandemic has changed the way that we all sort of move around the region, uh, hybrid work, uh, many more midday trips and, and the like. Um, and these uh, changes in travel patterns have um, severely affected um, you know, our, our budget as well as the uh, level of service that we can actually put on the road. Um, and so uh, it's incredibly important for us to hear from um, our transit riders, uh, because um, in order to sort of um, map our service onto the needs of our of our riders, um, we need we need that feedback. And so um, later today, I'll, I'll make sure to share with you um, additional information about that effort um, so that you can share that out to, um, you know, your community members. Um, want to just uh, thank you uh, in advance for for sharing that out um, so uh, through most of the month of May you'll see AC Transit staff at bus stops um, talking to transit riders uh, asking them to complete the survey um, we'll receive some input um, and we will use that input to feed into um, creating uh, some some various options on how the, the service will work. Um, and then we'll come back uh, for additional co uh, community input uh, on those options, um, what works, what doesn't, um, what you'd like to see more of, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and our goal is to have a new service plan um, on the ground in August of 2024. Um, if you'd like to learn more, uh, again, I I'll share more, but um, you can visit actransit.org slash realign, which is R-E-A-L-I-G-N. Um, and also wanted to thank Edgar, um, the supervisor shared that out on the, on his um, social media. Uh, so very much appreciate that. Um, and so thank you all for your time and your partnership. I have a question. Could you give Edgar a sample of that uh, survey so we can see it? Just send a link to the survey to Edgar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can, I can forward the link, um, which is a, it's a pretty simple survey. It probably takes five minutes. Um, I can definitely share that uh, with him, and he can he can share that out. Um, I do think that you all of your email addresses are on the Mac website, so I can send it to you individually as well. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Before and, you go away, I have a question about the survey. Is that the one that's posted with signs on the fence posts? Uh, on bus stops, yes. So yes, it has we, QR codes. We've, we've really tried to. Um, maximize the engagement with what we're, we sort of refer to as hard to reach populations. So, um, you know, I mean, th there's there's a certain sort of population that um, is pretty easy to reach with sort of conventional outreach techniques. And so, um, so you're saying we're unconventional. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So so that that's not what I did. Can I take it on my that. phone? Um, you can. So there's okay, there's a perfect. number of different ways. So we have paper Great. surveys that we're bringing out. So we're doing pop ins and and pop out. So um, we're going to places where we know that people are going to be like farmers markets and the, and the like. Um, also holding our um, our sort of standalone uh, community outreach efforts, um, as well as just you know generally trying to to meet people um, where they are. So um, trying Thank to cover you. all the bases. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, are there any further public comments? This comes in the Centennial event for East Bend Mode on May 21st, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. The beer in question is a lager. It is a partnership with East Bay Mud and Drake's because Drake's is in San Leandro. Therefore, they use our water to make beer. I'm going because, well, I'm going to volunteer to the Drake's. So, because I can't. But, um, you know, that it's, it's going to be, it's, it's shaping up to be a really fun event. So I hope you can make an attempt to come to it and enjoy it. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, I second it. Not often you get a chance to drink with George. That's, so, uh, that's very true. All right. So further public comments, Steve? I think that's People, okay. No? No? I don't want no hands raised. Is that okay? I think we can all right. Ahead. So I think we can adjourn our meeting. Yeah. Make it so? 8.49 p.m.